Hi, I'm your 4th District State Representative, Matt Shea. Thank you for joining me on this legislative update. Several days ago, a small minority in Washington State celebrated as Governor Christine Gregoire signed the redefinition of marriage bill into law. The measure, Senate Bill 6239, repeals the Defense of Marriage Act and legalizes same-sex marriage in Washington State. While some were celebrating, a majority of citizens across the state have also been left wondering what the future will hold for families and religious liberty. When the bill came to the House floor for a vote on February 8th, many of my House Republican colleagues and I fought very hard to protect the God-given institution of marriage between one man and one woman. During the two-hour debate, we also fought to protect and defend the constitutional right of conscientious objection, the right not to participate in an activity based on sincerely held religious beliefs. Specifically, I voiced my concern for citizens and businesses who have no protections from lawsuits if they decline to participate in same-sex marriage ceremonies on the basis of their sincerely held religious beliefs. Three times in the Judiciary Committee, nonpartisan political staff said very clearly and very unequivocally that homosexuals have the same rights, benefits, and privileges as married couples. Three times in Judiciary Committee, nonpartisan political staff in that committee said very specifically this bill does not protect the religious liberty of businesses and individuals. And three times, Mr. Speaker, during that debate and those hearings, legal scholars, some of the greatest minds in this country, said that this bill doesn't go far enough to protect religious liberty. Mr. Speaker, if you own a tuxedo rental, or a limousine rental, or you own a hotel, or a private facility, or a bakery, or perhaps even you do marriage counseling or marriage retreats, this bill has no protection for you. The Seattle Times has said that there's no truth to my argument that citizens and businesses could be sued if they refuse service in same-sex marriage ceremonies, that it just won't happen. Well, I would like to counter that. It already has happened in this state. Just ask the private pharmacies across Washington who were forced into court when they refused to stock and dispense the Plan B morning after contraceptive. They too conscientiously objected based on sincerely held religious beliefs, and they still ended up in court. Article 1, Section 11 of the Washington State Constitution says, absolute freedom of conscience in all matters of religious sentiment, belief, and worship shall be guaranteed to every individual. Article 26 of our state constitution also says, perfect toleration of religious sentiment shall be secured and that no inhabitant of this state shall be molested in person or property on account of his or her mode of religious worship. These are some of the strongest words of any state in the nation. And Washington's founders wrote this to protect the right of conscience. Passage of same-sex marriage legislation eviscerates that long-standing and well-recognized right. So what happens from here? Well, there's a grassroots effort across the state to gather signatures to put this measure on the ballot for referendum. And that referendum has already been filed. Due to the process, including review by the Attorney General and Secretary of State, those petitions will most likely not be available to sign for almost 30 days. And I believe, and I hope and pray, voters will have the final say. With the same-sex marriage issue behind us in the legislature, it's my hope we can finally focus on the issues that really matter to Washington citizens like jobs and the economy and balancing the Washington state budget. We are more than halfway through the 60-day session and yet nothing has been done to close a $1.5 billion budget shortfall. And if we are forced into a special session to deal with the budget, it will be solely due to the fact that the first 30 days of a session were wasted on divisive social issues such as same-sex marriage. On a separate note, many of you have asked me about the future of precinct committee officer elections. Well, I'm pleased to inform you that legislation I helped author, which will save precinct committee officer elections, passed the House this last week. Precinct committee officers, or PCOs, are the grassroots level of politics. They organize neighborhoods and help people get out to vote. Last year, a judge ruled our PCO elections were unconstitutional because anyone, regardless of party affiliation, could vote for a Republican or Democrat PCO. 
So I helped write House Bill 1860 to address that concern and reinstitute PCO elections. The bill received unanimous approval in the House and is now headed to the Senate. Finally, I want to invite you to join me in my telephone town hall meeting from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 22nd. Go to my website to get the telephone number and more information. You'll see that address of my website on your screen now. Thanks again for joining me on this legislative update. I'm your state representative, Matt Shea.